Hello, this is part four of a four-part series on simple regression. You may recall that we reviewed the problem, stated the research question, identified the variables, and an overview of some of the SPSS procedures. In part two, we computed descriptive statistics both univariately and bivariately. And in part three, we assess the assumptions under linear regression. In this module, uh, we're going to interpret the regression analysis, reviewing the model summary, the role of the ANOVA table, and an overview of the coefficients table. And finally, we'll follow up with an evaluation of the statistical outcomes. Let me begin with uh, the procedures for SPSS, for computing regression. So we would go to regression and linear, uh, put in education as the independent variable and income as the dependent variable, and click OK. So let's see what we produced here. Um, the model summary uh, gives us the R value, the Pearson's R, R squared, which is also um, interpreted as the percent of variance that is accounted for in income by education. Adjusted R square, which uh, is an algorithm that takes into account the sample size and the number of independent variables. As the sample size grows small and the number of independent variables grows large, then the adjusted R square is adjusted downward. And finally, the standard error, the estimate, which we will use uh, to predict a uh, confidence interval about any of the predicted values. The ANOVA table, that is the second piece of information in the uh, regression analysis, is used to test the hypothesis that R is equal to zero. Uh, recall that uh, the p-value that we're looking for here uh, is to uh, compare the obtained probability to our alpha level, which is 0.05. If the obtained probability or the p-value is less than 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, the p-value is in fact less than 0.05. I also uh, double-clicked on the p-value because it indicated 0 0.000, and I just wanted to show you that in SPSS, um, the number is just too small to put in uh, to the cell there. So that is what this number looks like. Uh, 1.378 times 10 to the minus 4, which is this value here. Um, and finally, the coefficients table gives us information about um, the regression equation. Uh, there are two columns that we want to focus on. One are the unstandardized coefficients, the raw score coefficients, and then the standardized coefficients, or the beta weights. Uh, beta uh, when we're using a simple regression with just one independent variable, uh, this value here is identical to the R value here, but in a multiple regression, that isn't the case. Uh, we see that education is a significant predictor, and uh, these values here, uh, the constant and the education B weights, are used to create the regression formula. So here we have this coefficient, 3364.764, times whatever value of education that we're going to use, plus the constant, which in this case is negative. Um, so we can use the regression equation uh, not only to make a prediction, but include with that, the standard error, the estimate, we can compute a 95% conf uh, percent confidence interval. So if you look at the bottom of this slide, uh, I've chosen an education uh, value of 12 years, and I have computed the uh, regression uh, equation and uh, computed an estimated income of $29,406.95. Um, by multiplying uh, the standard error of the estimate uh, by uh, 1.96, which is the z-score equivalent of 0.05, uh, I can compute the upper and lower confidence intervals. So 
what I did was to multiply 5440.748 times 1.96 and then added that uh, to income and then I subtracted it from income and so you see that I have here uh, 185708 and $40,070.81 uh, is the upper and lower 95% confidence interval uh, for the predicted value of uh, an income of $29,000. And so what that is saying is that um, our predicted value of $29,406, 95% of the time would range between $18,500 and $40,000. That's a pretty uh, large range uh, for uh, a predicted value. I mean, we could almost guess that a, a value would be somewhere between twenty and $40,000. Uh, the problem here is that we have a very small sample size, and that is why our standard error of the estimate is rather large, because recall that the standard error formula is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Therefore, as n grows large, the standard error of the estimate grows small. So if, if n was infinite, then the standard error of the estimate would be uh, zero. And finally, let's evaluate our model. We have a very small confident, um, a, a very small uh, sample size of n, uh, which gives rise to a fairly large 95% confidence interval. Uh, those are the uh, downsides. Uh, on the upsides, we have a fairly strong positive relationship that appears quite linear. 83.4% um, of the variability in income uh, is explained by education, and, and that's good. Um, the, uh, in terms of assessing the assumptions, um, uh, income was negatively skewed, but it was not statistically significant, uh, and there were no substantive multivariate problems. Uh, in terms of external validity, uh, we may want to caution uh, around any type of uh, predictions using the regression equation because it has such a small sample size uh, that it gives rise to such a very large confidence interval. And uh, finally, we have no knowledge about the sampling method or the description of the sample. So um, I think overall, uh, it, Given the small sample size and the strong correlation between the two variables, um, I think it, it's, it's reasonable. Uh, but if we were going to be spending a lot of money uh, or making decisions that had uh, some significant outcomes, we would certainly want to have an analysis that had far more than just 10 participants. So um, this is the... Uh, conclusion of the tutorial on simple regression.